Welcome to Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest, the weekly podcast where movie enthusiasts, ex-movie theater projectionists, new and old friends, take the time to talk about a movie that we just watched and answer that very question, should or shouldn't you watch this? There are some places in the universe you just don't go alone. That's why we're going together, soldiers. This time it's war. Join us for a review and breakdown of Aliens from 1986 in our fourth part of a 12-part series of our Alien and Predator extravagans. Yes. In on an alien ship which destroyed my crew. She'll risk everything to destroy them. They mostly come at night. Go to infrared, people. These people are here to protect you. Multiple signals. Your soldiers. What's happening, April? It won't make any difference. Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> Aliens. The new movie. Come on! Welcome back to part two of our review of Aliens. Let me tell you something, Pandeo. <laughs> Here's our popcorn trivia. <laughs> you gotta warn me before you play that, bro. <laughs> Do you like Relax. that? Let me tell you something, Pandeo. So, <laughs> Lance Henriksen, who plays Bishop, had privately pledged to quit acting if this part didn't work out for him after years of journeyman roles. It proved to be one of his most successful films. He's amazing. He's too. the best. Like he, like the two androids so far in this series oh, are man. amazing. Yeah, stealing the show. Like so what's good. Bilbo? Like he's so great. What is his name? I don't I remember, can't remember his name, but yeah, Bilbo and Bishop. Looking it up, Bilbo and Bishop do a really great job. So speaking of Bishop. The knife trick scene was... You mean the actor or the character's name? Sorry. No, the actor's name. Okay. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember his real name or his character's name. It started either. with an A, didn't it? Oh, it was uh, Ash. Ash. Right? Yeah. Was it Ash? Ash. That was the character, yeah. Yeah, some neckbeard, I read about this in the last one, said it was <laughs> a, like... ABC, right? A, B, it went in order except for one, one of the androids was an E or something, and he, he like explained how it, it's okay, and I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> just, oh, yeah, David. Just stop. Yeah, David. So he goes A, B, and then I think they like skip C, but he explains how it's okay, and I'm like, <laughs> shut up, dude. <laughs> so speaking of Bishop, the knife trick was... Exp- Originally going to be done by Bishop alone, but according to Lance Hendrickson, he suggested James Cameron to have Hudson put his hand on top of his, to which Cameron agreed as Hendrickson felt the scene needed something extra. This is the crazy thing that I didn't know. The change was discussed with almost everyone except Bill Paxton. (laughs) Hendrickson also remembers a long night of drinking after shooting this scene followed by a reshoot of the scene as it looked too fake when they sped the footage up. He accidentally caught Paxton's pinky with the knife on the reshoot and cut it. Ooh. <laughs> Can you imagine you getting on set and Bill's like, hey, man, <laughs> what are we doing? Was it, was it a real knife? It must have been because he cut it. That's him. insane. Like when they watching I mean, it, I'm like, eh, the prop knife. I mean, maybe it's like not sharp, but still metal. enough that it could cut. I mean, it cut him. Yeah. And going slow and then sped up, but. Still, I, like, if you had done that, I'm pulling my hand away. There's no way. Yeah, I have tiny hands. I'll slip that out immediately. <laughs> well, you have tiny hands, but they're thick in some areas. Girthy. They're yeah, g- girthy. I have really big thumbs. <laughs> it's weird, like adult thumbs and then baby fingers. It's a trip. Maybe like toddler fingers. So you mentioned this <laughs> in the last cut episode. that shit out. <laughs> Uh, d- angry no uh, Dr. Dare said this in our last episode but he was uh, talking about the improvised lines by Paxton and most of his lines the game over man was uh, improvised and his famous line we're on an express elevator to hell going down was probably improvised as well as it doesn't appear in the shooting script it's so good so a lot of that stuff he just made up which is awesome apparently you don't like it angry Dane. Um, I gotta be honest. My biggest beef with oh, this to the listeners, you haven't ever seen this. This is the first either. time I watched this. Yeah. This is that's crazy. That's awesome. 
I like the movie overall, but my biggest problem with it is the Marines. The 100%. whole, the whole thing with the Marines. Like, Let's save that for beefs. Okay. But yeah. I, I agree. They seemed like guys pretending to be Marines, like trying to be pretending to be tough. And I, it was very distracting. Okay. I, I agree. I agree. I'll rant with you in the beefs, bro. I, yes. I, have a, I have a couple of that are, can piggyback on that as well. So... This I thought was interesting. The alien nest set was kept intact after filming, and it was later used as the Axis chemical set for Batman in 1989. When the Batman crew first entered the set, they found most of the alien nest fully intact. That's crazy. Isn't that cool? That's crazy. I didn't know that. Uh, None of the models of the original designs of the uh, Nostromo shuttle from alien could be found so set designers and model makers had to reconstruct the model of the ship and the interior set from watching the movie oh wow what happened to the guy remember the guy who did all the miniatures on yeah i don't know what's his name i can't remember his. he was on that uh jodorowsky's dune thing that we're always referencing the the documentary jodorowsky's dune which is great you should watch it listeners Uh, but he was pretty awesome I, i wonder why he wasn't on the movie. Yeah, apparently they had to like watch the film frame by frame and recreate, recreate it. it. That That's just seems crazy. so much so much work. It, it's terrifying. So the special edition includes 17 minutes of extra scenes. Ripley discussing her daughter with Burke. Great scene. Which is great. Ripley is demoted by the board. That's extended. Uh, Newt's parents discovering the abandoned alien ship on LV-426 awesome a tour yeah. through the sulaco prior to the marines waking up which i think was amazing it, it tied in some connective tissue to the first film yeah. and there were like that opening the, scene the opening scene yeah cut completely uh let's see hudson bragging about his weaponry was not mm. in the original ripley hesi- hesitates before she enters the colony complex on the planet the robot sentry guns repelling two alien raids. What? Cut out. That whole part wasn't even in the, what? the theatrical version. The Marines theorizing about the alien leader as the source of the eggs. Them th- thinking about the ant, like mm-hmm. the ant analogy. All, all not in the Saying theatrical an cut. Farm. And Hicks and Ripley exchanging first names, which I think is a beautiful scene. Yeah. Uh, all cut. Also included as a scene on LV-426 where a child rides a big wheel, similar to the one ridden in Terminator. All cut out. Hmm. And to be honest, like I don't even recognize the theatrical version as, a, as one you should even consider watching. No. It's so it, much better. Unless you've got somewhere to be. <laughs> Dude, I think there was a scene where she, yeah, that got cut where she, got, where she handed Burke a grenade. Oh, that, no, that's a scene cut. Uh, no, 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 I did, re- I did read about that. That is a deleted scene. You, uh, you can watch that it. That you only get to access on the Blu-ray. Correct. You, you get to see her hand him a grenade because he's like, She's hey. like leaving and she finds him all plastered up, gooed up. And, and he's like, it's so paces something about how He says something about like killing him and she won't kill him. He's going to have to kill himself. Yeah, so she just hands him a grenade and oh. leaves. And she doesn't yeah. even like en- engage it or an arm no. it. She, she just says, you, you do it to yourself. Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, I love that. Uh, the alien screams are baboon shrieks. I was really Altered curious about post. that. Yeah. I... It's. I was like, that's some sort of wild animal. That's like a Seriously, real animal. Baboons that they, are nightmare fuel. Oh my gosh, they are. <laughs> Dude, I, ba- baboons. I don't have a lot of experience, or I don't know about baboons. What about but. raccoons? No, no. Those are horrible. Raccoons too. are dope. I'm cool with raccoons. Oh, you like raccoons? I'd have a baby pet raccoon. I don't oh, care. get out of here! But man. baboons, they're dude? just they're pests. What about the alien queen's breathing at towards the end, where she's like? <sighs> So it's really awesome. Dude, did you know that the queen has clear teeth? Yes. Yeah, that was a, I didn't notice a production change. Because they they were going to hire H.R. Geiger to come back. And for some reason, they didn't. Probably because Cameron is an a-hole. Yeah, he didn't want... <laughs> he wanted to take all the credit, probably, for all the new stuff. But 
And uh, granted, he did a great job, but like he's an a hole. It's the forty second greatest movie of all time. So uh, yeah, he, what do you do, James? You did a good job. I know he's listening. So, but yeah, like <laughs> that that was a unique change to the face uh, of the queen. The other ones have like metallic looking teeth. She has clear ones. <laughs> The body mounts for Vasquez and Drake's smart guns were taken from Steadicam gear. This is for... You called it while we were watching. Yeah. yeah. According to Mark Rolston and Jeanette Goldstein, the smart guns were between 70 and 90 pounds and were so heavy that the Velcro straps on their gear wouldn't stay fastened. So the crew had to duct tape the gear onto them every day they filmed. Oh, they had to reinforce it because it was so. It heavy. looked so cool, and that though. chick was so buff; like she, she had to have been big to or in order to hold that up, man. That was awesome. Uh, can we talk about her character for just a second? Or, you, yeah, yeah. As long as it's not beefy. Oh, never Be- mind. Beefs need to be in beefs. Okay. Well, can you, I want you to this say is, just one thing you loved about this movie? Let me tell you something. This is popcorn trivia. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll save it for beefs. Okay, I loved lots of things about it. Okay. The Marines well, the, is all my, all of the Marines, everything about the every Marines, single Marine. was my beef. How I many Marines it. were there? That's how many beefs I have. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> so, in an interview, Got composer uh, James Horner felt that James Cameron had given him so little time to write a musical score for the film, he was forced to cannibalize previous scores he'd done, such as elements from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and Star Trek III, The Search for Spock as well as adapt a rendition of uh, gay, gay and Ballet Suite for the main and end titles. Horner stated that the tensions with Cameron were so high during post-production that he assumed they would never work together again. However, Cameron loved the score from Braveheart so much, the two mutually agreed that Horner would write the score for Titanic because it was a story they both wanted to do. Whoa. They've so, connected and, and on they, some serious stuff. Yeah, and they both won Oscars for Titanic. So, hmm. And he also collaborated with him on Avatar. you got to respect someone who can put their personal stuff aside because they want to win so bad. It's so mm-hmm. awesome. I love that. Yeah. So this is a really cool th- a trivia point, too. When the set crews were looking around for floor grading to use on the Sulaco set design... They asked a local set design manufacturer shop if they had anything of, of the sort. Indeed, they did. And an, an immense pile of old floor grading had been sitting out in the back of their shop for the last seven years. It was left there from when they tore down the set of Alien. <laughs> it's so cool. That's, I don't know. that's Stuff wicked. Stuff like that, just, it's just really rad. The model of the derelict engineer ship mm. seen in the first film is the same model used in the first film. Fox had turned the model over to effects wizard prop archivist Bob Burns, who had the prop sitting in his driveway. With what? some repair, it was able to be reused for the brief appearance in the film. Hmm. Wow. This guy just had it. Like, hey, hey, Bob, do you still have that? <laughs> that yeah, it's just out there in uh, the driveway. It's just, in my, it's just in my driveway by my car. Uh, we break a brain in. It's just it's awesome. The Alien franchise was a major inspiration for the Nintendo series Metroid. The first game features a girl heroine that explores planets by herself while fighting dangerous biomechanoid creatures. They even named the bad guy of the series Ridley Hmm. after the director of Alien. And the second game, Metroid 2 Return of Samus, features a Metroid queen. That's awesome. That's cool, huh? Samus is dope. Yeah. Okay, I, I hadn't played, I hadn't seen this movie, but I did grow up in the '80s and '90s. And as soon as we got into it, and they had the guns, and they were introducing the Marines, I had this flashback. I'd totally forgotten of that Aliens arcade game. Yeah. Oh yes, this one with the guns and stuff. A hundred percent. Do you remember dope. that? Yes. 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 I love. That I swear game. they used some audio or something from the movie in like the opening of the game because it had it to totally. That's still like a really awesome game. You can find it in like, I've been in like old hotels or like old places and they, and they have it and I always want to play it. I feel like I always played it at the movie theater, weird enough. Yeah. So I have two more trivia and then we'll get to beefs. Okay. Okay. In Alien, H.R. Geiger originally intended the openings 
on the top of the alien eggs to closely resemble a human vulva. But the explicitly mm. sexual aspects of the design were soon dropped due to censorship concerns. He then designed the openings of the derelict ship that Dallas, Lambert, and Ash go through to be vaguely vulvar, vulvar, <laughs> in shape. Mm. Geiger's vision of a distinctly vaginal beginning to the alien story may have extended in some small way to the sequel. The letter I in the film's title flares out into an ovular shape resembling yeah. a vulva. Yeah. Aliens. Honestly, Aliens. that imagery is everywhere. You, I almost didn't see it at what, the end because you, what you about just get the, used to it. The gross, you get to see the, a really good close-up of the the, fa- the inside of the face hugger, which was... Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. It's like a combo of both. Mm-hmm. Was that when they're locked in the room? Kind of... That's the part you're After talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah where they're in the little beak, the big beakers. I yeah. mean, are we going to skip just like cool shit about the movie? Because Burke no, was we got, amazing. Bro. So we've got beefs, uh, popcorn puzzles, and then redemption. Oh, okay, okay. So this is my last p- trivia point. So Lance Hendrickson caught a dose of food poisoning from the milk and yogurt combination that he had to spew up when his chest was pierced by the alien queen's tail. So gross. Having this lactose combination sitting around under hot studio lights created a bacterial breeding ground. Curiously, the crew of the first alien film opted not to use milk for Ash's death scene where he also spews the milky substance out of his mouth as they thought a fluid made of milk would sour under the hot lights. And there was this joke where they were leaving him over in the side and they wouldn't go, when he was like, hey, I need a drink or hey, I need something, they they're like wouldn't go over to talk to him because he smelled so bad. Ugh. Like, how horrible Ugh. is that? Dude, warm, warm bad milk is not. Nah. It's gross. Ugh. All right. Where's the beef? Hey, where's the beef? All right, here you go. I'll, I'll be quick. Give me your beefs. The Marines were ridiculous. So I, when I read about this, um, James Cameron's brother was in the military, and he basically complained to his brother, like, dude, these guys are jo- a joke. But I, I don't know. I just see military people on screen, so I liked it, but I... It is probably horrible. My expectations are probably too high because I'm, I'm like thinking this is the future. The Marines are going to be super organized and disciplined and they're going to have like futuristic gear, not motocross chest protectors and yes. steady cam rigs. And Maybe the steady cam rig thing was cool though. But their gear did not fit the type of combat they were going into, like the green and brown camo or whatever it was. It just looked. Like, like they the ran Vietnam out of budget style. for the uniforms and the, you know, the gear they had. And then they did not seem like zero soldiers. toughness well, at they, all. Well, in like that disciplined, unified, like things you see on like, uh, what's that Catherine Bigelow movie where. Zero Dark Thirty. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or like last, what what's that other movie where like the. The Navy SEALs get killed by oh, terrorists. Lone, lone Survivor. Yeah. With those, yeah, yeah the way Marky those Mark. those soldiers behave in those movies is like what I wish this would have been more like. These were more like merc- like a team of ragtag mercenaries. Yeah, even like the bottom of the barrel guys. Yes. Like the lieutenant whoever was in charge, the guy with the cigar. <laughs> he was he hot. was they were all just ridiculous caricatures. Yes. Yeah. So that that bothered me. The gear bothered me. And then, okay, and then, um, what is her name? Jeanette Weinstein? Angry the- Dane has a big smile on his face right now. He's loving the Wait. beefs. Is that her name? The fe- She was the most blatant, like, Hispanic, st- like, stereotype yeah. brown. She had yes. literal brown face on. And then she had, <laughs> she had like, yeah. a... Like the dark eyeliner, and she makes, and she had a red like bloods bandana around her yeah. head, and it's the future. And, We're in the twenty second century, and they make and a she crack looks like about she's illegal aliens to from her. East that LA in nineteen eighty six. Yeah, the crack about illegal aliens, like. Do we have interplanetary Dude, travel? Dude, by the 22nd century, we're all going to be a, a unified caramel-colored race across the world anyway. 
Yeah. Actually, the way everything's going in the world, we're probably going to be worse off. <laughs> We're probably better off now than we will be in the twenty well, first century. You might be right. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. I, I didn't even they, notice the gear. It was the personalities. Like the the personalities were fun, but they're not these are not Marines. These right. are not people with any training. They were of cartoonish any kind. to me. And yes. Yeah, the gear, like even the helmets were reissued the ones from like filming platoon yes, or something yes. like that. Or Starship Troopers or something. <laughs> It's like they took the platoon helmets and added some weird stuff to yes. us. Yeah. You'd have like, yes. <laughs> anyway, that's my only, that's my only beef. Any other beefs? I have two more beefs, but angry, or Dr. Dare. Um, I already spoiled mine with the money. Like, yeah, what? that one's a good beef. <laughs> I like that one Just a lot. lame. I don't think so. I really love this movie. I guess a beef that they cut the freaking sentry guns from the theatrical release. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that was a really exciting scene, and sucks that it was. So I read the reason why they cut so so many full scenes because I guess what I read it was harder for them to make like mini cuts throughout the film. Oh, because like they were doing it practically, but they were literally cutting the film. So it was easier for them to, to cut then. like pieces, whole pieces like out. a big chunk then so to they, shorten a bunch of other scenes. Yeah, so Anne Heard had the difficult choice because the, the production company was like, hey, we need it to be shorter. And so they had to go through and cut things that they really liked, but it was whole scenes. Yeah, that makes sense from like a technical standpoint. And they'd already gone over budget on editing because James Cameron, Cameron was adamant about adding flashes where, where they would shoot the gun. So every time, every single oh, time they would shoot those the were gun. All special effects he, flashes. No, they added a white frame oh. in between each flat, like each gun bullet discharge. So there's like hundreds and hundreds of. It's edits. just like one frame. Yeah, one frame of white after just, every sh shot. Sh Jeez. Yeah. So they, wow. At that point, they they were like, "Well, we got to lose whole scenes," which was lame. Uh, so my biggest beef is, and this isn't a beef with Sigourney Weaver because uh, she did she got a best actor a best actress Academy Award nomination for this movie, and it's a my beef is that she didn't win, and my beef is that she got screwed over over her salary. And they, she just wasn't appreciated as much as she should have been because she's amazing. And I love, I don't love, and this, I might get grief for this. I don't love female heroines for female heroines sake. I love female heroines when they're awesome. Like from Terminator 2, ironically, another James Cameron film, but. Kill uh, Bill? Kill Bill. There's a lot of really good ones, but I don't like it when they're just like, we have to have one because we have to have one. She just was badass. Yes. Like, end of story. Yes. Well, and there probably weren't a lot of films back then, 86, right? Yeah. That had those kind of badass late. Both, uh, I mean, I made fun of the whole brown face Vasquez character. Yeah. But, but the fact that she and Sigourney Weaver, that, that was probably pretty unique back then. Yes. Yeah. I think you see it more now. And it's almost worse because so often it's like this person is not uh, is not a hero. This is this is lame. They're just a woman. They're not doing anything. To fill cool. a quota or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These yeah. are like, I mean, she's inspiring here. Like she's get, keeps everyone on track. She does everything in the whole movie. Yeah, she, she's badass in the first one, and then this one as well. So yeah. Uh, my last two beefs are, I have a beef with Cameron and this is this is what this guy says on the last day of shooting this is a quote so he dre he wants he gr gathers the whole crew together cuz he's had this has been a horrible shoot for him people have walked off sets there's like tea time breaks cuz it's in UK and he he hates having to stop like they have to be done by 5 o'clock every day and he he wants to shoot for you know 17 hours and so it's been a really bad shoot for everyone. He gets them together and he says, one thing that kept him going through it all was the certain knowledge that one day I would drive out of Pinewood and never come back and that you sorry bastards would still be here. That's what this guy <laughs> says, man. 
How do like, you end up like that? Get no. out of here, dude. Go. So that's my beef. Cameron, you're my beef in this Maybe film. Maybe we're just not like special enough to understand what it's like. Like Cameron has made some insane yeah, maybe you have to be an a hole to get. Well, what and you maybe need. when you're genuinely that much better than the general populace, you just can't help yourself. Being mad at people because they don't get it. Yeah, yeah. He has such a distinct look. Like we were saying. Yeah. I mean, the futuristic mm-hmm. scenes from the Terminator movies. The like all, yeah. the, especially the exteriors. It was yeah. like, oh yeah, this is James Cameron. Yeah. So my last beef is in 2015. It was rumored that Scorny Weaver would return as Ripley for the first time in 20 years since Alien Resurrection. The fifth, the fifth film would ignore Alien 3 and Alien Its Interaction as if they never happened. Uh, as an alternate timeline, Neil Blomkamp was attached to direct with Ridley Scott uh, producing. However, in 2017, Blomkamp stated that the project was unofficially dead because the studio had preferred to complete Scott's Alien prequel tri- trilogy first. Scott later added that Blomkamp's project had never been more than some ideas and artwork without a completed script. And that's horse poo because you should go look up all the concept art and the script that they were going to do. It was, it's just, it sucks that yep. we didn't get that. That's a, I remember we, we talking to you will, about right? that when that news came out yeah. on our carpool. I remember thinking it was going to be amazing. And then. And it's dead. Dead. Because we got, I mean, we get the engineers, but. We also get a lot of frustration that we've already talked about on this pod about those those movies. I know that one's dead, but is there a possibility that there is still one more of the prequel trilogy? Yeah, that's the rumor is if he doesn't die, he'll make that third film that we're wanting of the origins or or at least going to the planet where they're where they're made. All right. So I know Angry Dane has a heart out, but we have two more categories you let me know when you need to leave and we'll just keep going okay so this brings us to our fourth out of five categories which is popcorn puzzles a sphincter says what what <laughs> what did you a get sphincter says this, what <laughs> so what, what? exactly what? <laughs> so i only have two puzzles um the Car- carrie hen is her name the little girl who plays Newt? No. Uh, she, this was her only acting role. She, Ever? She later became a teacher. And I just, it's, she did Her life's such, probably a lot better because of it, though. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But I just thought she <laughs> did such a good job and wish that we could have had more of Newt. Funny enough, this should have been in trivia. I read that when she, like, fell down the duct and, like, slid, Oh, I read that, too. That... She had so much fun. She kept screwing up her stuff on purpose so, so she, she could, could keep go down the slide. And so James Cameron noticed, and he's like, "Hey, if you do this right, I'll let you just play on it as much as you want." So she did, and then he let her just keep sliding down it. I could That's see awesome. her just saying, "Pretty cool." Oh, sorry, I didn't. Need, I, I'll do it again. What was my line again? <laughs> yeah, she did a great job. That's surprising. So here's my other uh, popcorn puzzle. The title of Alien in Hungarian is The Eighth Passenger, colon, Death. Consequently, the title of Aliens was The Name of the Planet, colon, Death. <laughs> These are the names in Hungarian. What? Like, how, how imagine being in Hungary and you see these titles. The, the Eighth Passenger, Death. <laughs> that's the name of Aliens, hmm. the first alien. Hmm. Anyway, that's, that's my only puzzle. Yeah, that is odd. Any other things that you're like... I don't get this, or I don't, I don't understand what's going on. Any, any other puzzles? All right. No. Great. No. <laughs> this brings us to our last category. It's new, new-ish. It's been on some of my pods, but popcorn redemption. I have exercised the demons. So, so this is my way of, if, it, if we review a movie and we hate it so bad, that we can give some love at the end. We really like this movie, but it, I got way more love but than there's, I gave already. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of love. So I got love left. this is this is that. Um, let thought, me let me hear it. I thought technically it was beautiful, like the Queen, the way they. I thought it, compared to the first one, especially 
the aliens, all the aliens look so much more real. Yep. Um, the queen, when she rips the Android guy in half, yep. That was, that looked real. And it just, it just felt like a, a nineties movie, not an eighties movie. The way they cut the queen, the fight in the mech. Like I bet if you zoomed out, it would look ridiculous. These two things just slapping each other, but they cut it and it looks like she's giving her an uppercut, you know, like it was done so good. That You know why this was so good? This is the only film in the series to add special effects legend Stan Winston to oh, the wow. project, and he won an Oscar. This is his oh. first Oscar for special effects. He won many others because he's the goat, but that's why that's why it's so dope because of him. It, yeah, 100%. he he basically designed the Queen, like his team. So so good, it's rad. Uh, speaking of nominations. With a total of five nominations, this is the most Oscar-nominated movie of the franchise, and with two wins, best, best visual effects and best sound editing. It's the yeah, most dang. decorated in the series. The cool. other ones, as we see, are going to get... We're, we're on Not our way... Not quite as many. We're on we're our way three, downhill. We're down now. We're, we're going, going down now. We're going downhill, everybody, so mm. sorry and about I, that. I haven't seen Hold the rest your of them. Butts. Yeah, we've got, we've got Alien 3 coming up, Alien Its Erection... We've got the Predators. Dude, We have Predator four two. Predator movies, and then the Predator versus Aliens together at last. I, how about this? I think Burke is the best antagonist of all time. He is a smarmy we got, we gotta say asshole. We've got to say goodbye to Angry Oh, Man. i got to go. i got to take the kids to swimming lessons, just like <laughs> when we watch the movie. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Thanks, Popcorn Priest. Thanks, Dr. Thanks for, thanks for yeah, yeah, joining yeah. us, man. Dude, the Queen fight. I, I, The Queen was made so good because it didn't start with the last fight. It started with the Queen being smart yeah. and her threatening to burn the eggs, to kill the eggs. And she's like, she tells all the other warrior aliens to stop. Yeah, like the soldier ants. Yeah, like, like this is not just a mindless drone. Every other movie I've ever seen, I feel like it's just some dumb animal. No, She's and that made it so smart. scary. And then the fight, like to couple that with the fight, I mean, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. The in- instinct of the queen to to survive. Yes. After she's seen all of her her soldiers die, and then her young die. Yes. Then she hangs onto the ship somehow. Yeah. And then hides in there until she needs to come out. Yeah. And kill. It's just. It's just so awesome. It's two angry moms fighting. Yeah. And the, the line, scary. get away from her, you. Yeah. No. Get away from her, you. <laughs> it's like so awesome. I read that when people were watching this, they were, they were like screaming and like, yeah, and clapping when that happened. Dude, and Ripley, she walks into that last fight. So they say, stay away. And she walks the mech forward Mm -hmm. and then after a couple of tail whips she says come on like like neither one of them one of them's gonna die and they both know it yeah like oh man it's the the mech if you watch any of the special features about how they built the mech it's it's so amazing because it has to be light enough that they could move it but there's people helping her yeah. and it looks so heavy the way that the movement the, like, is the sound of the feet the hitting. sound design <laughs> yeah like so i mean no good. wonder it you know won best sound effects like this yeah. was all about that like when the when the bombs blow up yeah and all that stuff we we watched this in my home theater with the you know b- big sub and all the sounds it was it was it's amazing it's it really was good. so good by the way, James Cameron, where is the 4K edit of this, my, dude, my bro? Dude. Like, why can't you stop making these Avatar movies for 20 years and just give me True Lies on 4K? Yes. And give me Aliens on 4K. Yeah. It still looked amazing, though. Yeah, the Blu-ray transfer was good, but give me a break, man. Dude, I have one more. I, okay. I know I've talked about the Sentry Guns a lot, but... You're not even seeing any action. You're doing nothing but watching this counter go from, you know, 600 bullets or whatever down to zero. Yeah. It's like one of the most tense scenes ever. 
such a clever way of building tension. You're not even seeing aliens explode. They don't have to Ever. do anything. It's all my imagination. I'm just imagining this tunnel of carnage where those things are at. Was one, it's one of the coolest scenes, I think. And you've got both tunnels. You've got the yeah. one tunnel, and it has, which has two sentries, and the other one has two sentries. And you get to see the first one go down. And then the second one, you're like, oh, no, we're only... I've seen the movie so many times, and as it's getting close to zero, I'm like... <gasps> We're running out of ammo. There's no, no and bullets. then the last one gets down to 10, which yes. is even more brilliant because yes. you're like, oh, we did it. And yes. then and then in like a couple more minutes, they're like, uh, Pax's character, Hudson, is like, I'm getting a reading. They're yeah. coming. And they're yeah. like, well, that should be inside the building. And they're yeah. like, it's that whole like horror movie, like the caller is coming from inside your home. Yes. And it's like, it's like they're in the ceiling. That's yeah. just so awesome. And how they... Film that up upside down yep. of them crawling, like yep. all that. Just I have that this the ceiling scene. It's they're so just all cool. so good. Yeah, and the and the cu- the cuts are what yep. like you brought up earlier. That That's ins- what insane. makes it good too. So when you were talking earlier, uh, Doctor Dare about the Queen. So the Queen was portrayed by a combination of a full size animatronic model and small scale miniatures, and you you already had mentioned this, but the full size queen constructed by Winston's special effects company used a combination of stunt performers encased within the puppet and external manipulation to achieve its performance. The innovative approach was devised by Cameron, of course, as such a, an animatronic had never before been constructed. The concept was first tested with a crude mock-up affectionately called the garbage bag queen by Winston's team <laughs> due to the black trash bags used to cover it. It's awesome. In the parking lot of Winston studio in Los Angeles, the full size queen puppet was constructed in England and was mounted on a large crane kept out of shot in the film through clever editing. Although only one body shell was utilized for the majority of filming, a second was built especially for shots of the queen from behind with a different closing mechanism for sealing the stunt men within. Like, it's Nuts. just... This you, goes back, I have this theory, I'll talk about it on every podcast if I have to. Constraints breed creativity, man. You yes. get, you get, someone has a vision, if you have the, you can always accomplish what you want, and sometimes those constraints actually make it better than if you would have just had carte blanche to do it all through CGI or whatever. Those constraints made this scene way better. Yeah, and... And as much as we, I've been hating on Cameron for being an a-hole, like him saying, no, let's let, we got to, this is what I want. We got to, we got to figure out a way. There's a way to do it. Yeah. I'm sure there's a way for him to be a little nicer to people to get him to do what he wants, but he, his way is just being an a-hole and and they're like, okay, I'm terrified. I want to my job. So I'm going to figure out a way to do this. Yep. So, and I also believe that Cameron's kind of like the guy who, if he believes in you, like, yeah, he's like an angry Disney. Like if you, he knows you can give him what you want. He's great. He's great to you. But the other guys who are not giving him what he wants, he's an a-hole to them. Yeah. They're dead. They don't exist. Yeah. So, uh, let's see here. And when you were mentioning how it took, uh, 14 to 16 operators to, to bring the queen to life, all of that, stuff that Winston learned helped him do what he did for Spielberg in a Jurassic Park for the T-Rex. Yes. Yeah. Which it's cool that, you know, in life, if you get, if you get to learn something from one thing and it's always going to help benefit you somewhere else. That's actually kind it. of funny because it, you had, that was the first time that was done. And then that helped Jurassic Park and, in Jurassic Park, that was the first time you saw com- real computer animation. Yes. So it was like almost a passing of the torch. That's that's really interesting. Yeah, I really like that. So my last popcorn redemption and then whatever else you, you have, Dr. Dare. Bill Paxton ran into a friend and colleague, James Cameron, shortly after the latter had been given the director's job in the movie. Paxton jokingly told Cameron, I hope you write me a good part in it and was subsequently called to audition. He got a fake plasma rifle to use, but he got too enthusiastic and later thought that his performance had been too over the top. 
Luckily, Cameron loved the energy that Paxton had displayed and offered him the part of Private Hudson, the movie's comic relief character. Paxton happily accepted, turning down the offer to play Zed in Police Academy 2, colon, their first assignment. Yeah, dang. Like, can you imagine this movie without Bill Paxton? And him being in Police Academy 2? No, that's <laughs> like, well done, Bill. Yeah, good choice. Yes. Yeah. Anything, any other things you want to add? No, I mean, I just love this movie. Yeah, for sure, I'm giving this a... Golden Bucket, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Like, this is... And I can watch this many times. I can watch... The slow it. scenes are great. The, yeah. Everything... There's not a lot of misses. Are You know, even having the Marines be caricatures made the movie great. Yeah. Are they, like, real Marines? Not at all. No. But maybe they're, like idiot space marines i don't know yeah yeah and i and i agree i agree with ryan to a point but i also love the fact that they're caricatures like i it's like watching starship troopers it's like i, I don't i don't care like that's they would not, all just be clones it wouldn't it wouldn't be as intriguing they wouldn't have different personalities they'd all be exactly the same that's well the, and i th i think you need that yeah because they're all going to most of them are going to die throughout the film, so you need to know, okay, oh, that guy's dying, or the captain. Yeah, it shouldn't just be soldier number four is dead. Yeah, the, the you know, Hicks is dying. Yeah. It, all these, 100%. So you know them, so, yeah. Well, this saga is has been great. It's been great having you guys. I know Ryan's gone. We miss, we miss him at the very end, but... Thank you. I really appreciate you joining us on the pod, Dr. Dare. Hit me up on the Twitters or the Instas if you want to interact with the great Popcorn Priest at Popcorn Priest. I respond to every tweet, post, comment, hashtag, or whatever else there is. Let us know if there's something you'd like us to review. Also, if you enjoyed this or any of our previous episodes, please subscribe so you can get notifications just on our do newest. It. Yeah, just subscribe. Just do it. Give it to me. I love movies, and I'd love if you'd share the love. Muchas gracias. Another way to share the love is sharing those dollars. I've created a Patreon account if you've liked anything up to this point and want to support the show. I'm literally, I'm doing it. You are. I'm literally Doctor, paying to be on here. Dr. Dare is a, is a supporter of the show. I love it. We, we need it to continue to bring these entertaining reviews. If you think it's good now, imagine how much it could be if we had just 10 more dollars. Yes. It, for the price of a cup of coffee, you can give the you popcorn can sponsor a priest. priest. <laughs> you can. At patreon.com forward slash popcorn priest. As always, thanks for listening. And thank you to my guests. Dr. Dare, You're thanks welcome. for coming. Thanks to Ryan, Thanks although me. he's not here. Always a pleasure. Join us next week for the for the Alien to the Third Power. Yeah. Alien Three. It's got the little the little. Get ready for some real beefs. Oh my gosh, the, the beefs are gonna come in <laughs> hot yeah. and heavy on the next bum, couple. Bum, 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 but maybe bum, we'll bum, bum, bum. maybe we'll see see some things that I'll we try really and be like. Positive. Yeah. 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 Well. Thank you for watching, or thank you for listening to Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest. We'll see you next week.